everybody. Let's take five and meditate on a lesson from God's Word together. In the Sermon on the Mount, we see how it looks when Christians participate in the kingdom of God. What does it look like when we live poor in spirit, when we mourn our sins? Why do we do that? Why, why do we hunger and thirst for righteousness? Why do we have to be meek? What role does this fill in our lives? Well, Jesus tells us in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So we are the salt of the earth. This is part of our role as disciples of Jesus. What does that mean? Salt was used for preservation. It was used for taste, the same ways it's used today in the ancient world. But there's a little more to it in the Bible. In Leviticus 2 verse 13, we're told that Uh, God told the Israelites, you shall season all your grain offerings with salt. You shall not let the salt of the covenant with your God be missing from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer with salt. Now, as strange as it may seem to us, but salt, salt was used as part of an offering to God. It was the sign of the covenant to dedicate something to God. Anything that was offered, any kind of food offering was seasoned with salt And that was the sign it's dedicated to God. The presence of salt then was the sign of the covenant. Our job then is to be signs of the covenant. If we are the salt of the earth, our job is to preserve the covenant with God. Our presence is to be a sign of God's covenant. And we're to be signposts where people see us, they see how God loves them, and they see what God is doing in the world today. So in this way, we are salt by the way we model what it looks like to be in a relationship with Jesus. To be in covenant with Jesus, we keep our commitment. We we display all those beatitudes. And as we'll see later on in the Sermon on the Mount, our behavior displays that. We are an ongoing reminder and an ongoing invitation of what God is doing in the world. And Jesus makes the same point about light. Light does two things as well. Light contrasts with the darkness so people can see what's there. Turn the light switch on and you can see what was in darkness. It contrasts with what was in darkness. But also it functions as a beacon, as he says, a city set on a hill. So if we follow Jesus and we display the Beatitudes, we are the light of the world. So we are the sign of the covenant and that being the sign of the covenant displays people, displays to people how they can have safety, where they can have safety And that's in Jesus. We show the world what God is up to. And since we are a sign of the covenant, we show people the safety of the gospel. What does this mean for us? It means we have a beautiful opportunity to be an influence in the world around us. And that opportunity starts with you. You get to be part of that. I get to be part of that. People, we have, so people can ask themselves the questions of, Uh, What can I do? What's wrong with our world? Well, the question should not be, what's wrong with our world? I mean, there's a lot wrong with the world, especially right now. There's a lot of fears out there, a lot of things that could go wrong. But the question should not be, what's going on out there? What's so-and-so doing about this? The question should be, are we the people who display the Beatitudes in our lives in contrast to the culture around us? That decision is going to change the outcome of your life more than any other choice you make, more than any other choice anybody else makes, any official makes. The biggest change in your life will be affected not by what's going on at the White House, not by what the CDC recommends, not how the pandemic will resolve itself, what happens with the economy, what happens with your job, what happens with the kids. The biggest change in your life will be from what do you do with Jesus? Will you dedicate your heart, mind, body, and soul to Jesus? Will you give yourself to him? When you do, that will make you a peacemaker. You'll be pure in heart. You'll be comforted. You'll be satisfied. You'll see God. And through the entire Bible, this is what God has been aiming for. But We'll see that next time that Jesus fulfills the law and the prophets. We'll check that out next time we take five. 